I think we have to have somebody at the helm that we can really rely on and whose word we can really rely on. And sadly, I'm afraid that doesn't appear to me to be Mr. Johnson. I spoke a little earlier on here on Times Radio Drive to uh, to Peter Bone, Conservative MP, loyal to a fault to to the Prime Minister. There's a photograph now. It's been published. It's been out there for a couple of hours now. And we see the Prime Minister. He's at a party. It is a party. The Prime Minister we now see has called that party. And some of that party were fined by the Metropolitan Police, but not the the Prime Minister. Peter Bone, thoroughly behind the PM. What, what about Roger Gale, who is, has not been, uh, to be clear, a, a supporter of the Prime Minister for some time yet? He's now joined us on the line. Uh, Roger, hi. Good evening, John. Roger, I'm, I won't ask you if you're supporting the Prime Minister because you haven't done that for, for some while now. But when you saw that photo published in the last couple of hours, tell me what went through your mind. I think it's damning. The Prime Minister said at the dispatch box, in December, in answer to a straight question, was there a party in Downing Street on the 13th of November? No. It's absolutely clear that there was a party, that he attended it, that he was raising a toast, a glass, to one of his colleagues, and therefore he misled the House from the dispatch box. Yeah. And honourably, there is only one answer to that. And the, 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 your answer to that is, is that the Prime Minister should resign, I anticipate. I'm sure that's, that is, is what you're saying. Look, it, it was a party. It was officially a party because the, 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 the Metropolitan Police punished people who were at that gathering for being at an illegal party. We're told the Prime Minister was the one who instigated it and he was there for something like something like 10 minutes. I wonder, you've given your view very clearly, Roger. I wonder, those facts, will they, they weigh with your Conservative colleagues? Do you guess? Will they change minds? Because... There's been an impression for a while now that the, the, the opinions on the Conservative side of the House have been pretty entrenched. Will this change any of that? I don't know, John, is the honest answer to that. Um, I expressed my view, as you know, 18 months ago. My view has not shifted at all. Uh, that was, of course, long before Partygate was a gleam in anybody's eye. Um, so my view hasn't changed. But I'm not campaigning with colleagues. I'm not sure. this with colleagues. I'm not trying to persuade people to put in letters if they... Uh, don't want to call a, a vote of no confidence in the Prime Minister, but I do think uh, that now that the war in Ukraine has turned into a war of nutrition, I fear, and could go on for a very long time, and given that we are now facing a cost of living crisis that has to be dealt with in a very big way indeed, I think we have to have somebody at the helm that we can really rely on and whose word we can really rely on. And sadly, I'm afraid that doesn't appear to me to be Mr Johnson. Well, again, that's a very, very clear answer. You, you, you were one of those, and you weren't the only one, Roger, who had severe doubts about the Prime Minister, but you suspended those, those, those doubts because we, there was a war going on in Ukraine, and as you say, a, a crisis, a, a, a cost-of-living crisis here at home. You've now revised that view. You think it is right the Prime Minister should go. To that extent, you believe the, the climate has changed, and in that way against the Prime Minister. In your mind, and I guess by extension, you'd imagine that would be so for others? I, I can't speak, and I mustn't speak for my colleagues. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to try and put words into colleagues' mouths, and I'm certainly not going to try and criticise colleagues for exercising their judgment. Um, about four weeks ago, I said I didn't think that now was the time to have a leadership election. That was at the moment of greatest danger in Ukraine, when it was apparently possible that Putin might have used battlefield nuclear weapons, and that, of course, would have led to World War III. I think that moment of crisis one moment of crisis has passed. Um, I'm not saying there aren't going to be others, but we are heading up to the end of the parliamentary session before the summer. Uh, the summer is a time when we could hold a leadership election and campaigning could go on because the House will not be sitting. And if we're going to do it at all, it seems to me that now is the time that it ought to be done. Right. And of course, as I, I believe that it ought to be done. I was talking to a uh, a colleague, Kate Ferguson from the Sun, on this program just a few moments ago, who, who had the the judgment that if 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 your your colleagues do not move this side of the summer break, then the prime minister will be there for the, for the duration until the next general election. Is that is that right in your judgment? Well, I think that's absolutely right, and I also think, and I may have said this to you before, I don't think it is beyond the bounds of possibility that Mr. Johnson might look at the way that the wind is blowing and call a snap election in September or October. Yes on the basis that that is his best chance of winning 
uh, not only effectively, therefore, a vote of confidence, but also of winning a, an election, even if with a reduced majority. After that, I think the going gets very rough indeed. But yeah. My view, given that the evidence has now been produced, it has, and the Prime Minister quite clearly has misled the House from the dispatch box, which is what I said earlier, and I think many feared. I think there is only a one honourable way out of yes. whether the Prime Minister can take it, of course. I don't know. Well, you, and you, you, you told me you're not in the business of, of campaigning for a particular outcome here, and I hear that clearly and, and respect your, the point that you're making. But the logic of your argument here now is those who think the Prime Minister is a liability to your party need to act quickly because the clock's against them. If they're going to act at all, then if, if they share my view, and they may not, I may be in a minority of one, John. I frequently am. Um, <laughs> that's the, the stuff of my political life. Um, but if there are others, uh, many others, who believe that the time has come for us to have a vote of confidence or no confidence in the Prime Minister, mm. then they need to move now, yes. I mean, the last, last word follows then that the publication of the, of the Sue Gray report may yet turn out to be a very important moment. It may be a very important moment, or in political terms, it may be a complete damn squib. You, your information is probably rather better as a journalist than mine is as a, is as a member of Parliament. No, I'm guessing, I'm guessing like you, Roger. Roger, it's great to have you on the show as always. Sir Roger Gale there, Conservative MP. Let's have a quick hello to Phil. 